My beloved family of God, I hope you put your seatbelt on today because this is serious, deep water. Um, this is deep water we're in right here in today's lesson, when God does not delight in sacrifices. Now, we've been talking about the temple, talking about worship, people bringing their sacrifices and things to God's assembly in worship. That's good. But there comes a time when God does not delight in sacrifices and burnt offerings. Listen to God now. This is Psalm 50 and verse 21. These things you have done. And I kept silence because you thought I was like you, like I, I was like you. This is God talking now, but I will reprove you. Why God? And set in order things before mine eyes. Now consider this, you that forget God, lest I tear you to pieces and there be none to deliver you. You ought to pay attention right now what God is saying, because I'm about to tear you apart. Who offers praise and sacrifice and glorifies me? And to him that orders his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of God? So God is saying, whoso offereth praise and glorifies me, but not just that, but him who orders his life aright, his work, his, his actions, his behavior, he who does these things, not just bringing sacrifice, but living the life so that there is no separation between the inner life and the outer life. No separation between my character and my, and my practice. No separation between my profession and my practice. God is saying, I want you to live one life. To be the person you are on the inside. God says he wants that person, that person professing things, claiming things, to live that way on the outside. God is saying, God is not averse to sacrifices. He's not averse to burnt offerings. He's not saying, don't come into my presence because you're a hypocrite. He's saying, don't continue hypocrisy. Don't continue to be a hypocrite in my presence. Live worthy of your calling. Why? Because I am a God who is whole, who is complete, who has integrity. I am a God who has integrity from start to finish. All parts of me are equally holy and the same. And through the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit, this is where God wants to take us. He wants us to be as consistently holy and consistently righteous as he is. That's why he says, I am the God that makes you, that makes you holy. The Bible calls us a royal priesthood. First Peter chapter two, we are a royal priesthood. Why is that? Because we are meant to exemplify the very holiness of our royal God, because we administrate his grace, administrate his grace and mediate his word to others. We share who he is with others. And he's saying, if you're going to attach yourself to me, then please, please, I need your profession and your practice to match up. God says, there is a time when I don't like it. And I will not hold back for those who do evil and yet claim my name. I'm, I'm going to have a problem with you. But if, as this beautiful psalm tells us here in verse 23, if you offer praise and glory to me and you line up your life, you order yourself. That's your decision with the power of the Holy Spirit. If you do that, God says, I'll bless you. That's worship that ought to never, ever end.